Hey class, Mr. G going over some stuff for curriculum now. So I've got my book here, which is my playbook. And uh, for my playbook, we're going to be deep diving into some stuff on curriculum. And if you guys have questions throughout this entire process, please don't forget to do two things for me. One, subscribe, because this is going to be an ongoing thing uh, between this and the other art videos that I'm making. But also uh, throw down in the comments if you guys have a question or an idea or a um, a conundrum of any type, uh, throw it down in the comments below. Happy to answer you guys' questions. It, uh, it makes that ongoing conversation much more palatable for all of us. Okay, guys, so we went over the overview of how this stuff works. And I, again, I just want to reiterate that this is dire importance as you guys are going forward and making your curriculum. So let's deep dive into some of those curriculum elements and we'll break that stuff down further. All right, in a given term, how many standards are you going to are you actually going to teach now most people are going to say oh we'll teach all of them technically you will however it won't be in the way that everybody that works in education feels that you're teaching every one of them all right so let's talk about a few of these number one or right, next one here uh vak pr2 which is understanding and applying media techniques and processes of two-dimensional works of art Examples of drawing, painting, printmaking, mixed media, using tools and materials in a safe and appropriate manner, and developing skills. All right, now from that, got all of these little pinpointed objects underneath, which is A through J. Now I will say this, these are uh, older standards. They're being refined or they were refined uh, depending on when this video has been watched. However, I'm using this as a guidance because this is just a really good example. All right, number one, uh, sorry, A, attempts to fill in space in an art composition. Now, we believe that all uh, elementary kindergarten kids should have an understanding that when they tr when they illustrate across a piece of paper that, you know, let me switch pages here because, you know, I kind of use that one up. When we give them a piece of paper, they don't sit on one side of it and just draw a dog. Let's just do little kid elementary house. Give it a little window. Oh, well, if we want to put a tree. And um, then there's a stop sign. Now, a student needs to understand that, well, most of the time your students won't draw in the side over here. They'll draw down here at the bottom and then just kind of leave it. And then there's like all this giant open space. That's exactly what the standard's talking about. They attempt to fill in the space in art composition. They don't leave anything blank. There's no to this big giant white space. Now, unpacking the standard is the action that we're trying to make sure that our students understand is that they fill in the space in an art composition. So, understanding space and spatial recognition. So, I'm gonna use the bottom half of my paper now. Now, for kindergarten, they have usually a year with their art teacher. So this is going to be for one year. Now, in that course of the year, we're going to just break this in half. Semester one, semester two. Out of those, we break down to quarters. It's like a bracket system in the playoffs. All right. From those quarters, we then have... Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Now, in each of these four sections, how many achievable items can we actually get covered? Typically, in one semester, you can get about three units taken care of. So that would bring us down to getting one and a half in each of the quarters. You might be able to get two. So let's just say two units each. Unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four. And in the grand scheme of things, that would be eight units for the kindergarten batch, which could be K through five. Let's just say through fifth. Because typically elementary students, they go, you know, K through five. So looking back at those standards again, they're going to understand Filling in space in art composition. Let's go down two more of these here. Creates drawings with a variety of media, pencils, crayons, pastels. That's going to be done every day. You don't need to be concerned about it because it's something that you're going to be doing every single day. Granted, some of these, uh, I mean, these things are going to be changing, but every, t every single day you're going to be using different forms of media to create um, mediums, media to create your artworks with. 
Draws a variety of lines, straight, curved, angled, broken, thick, thin, and shapes. Geometric, organic, free form, or free form shapes. Drawing with line, and then creates lines with a variety of media and art tools, pencils, crayons, scissors, paintbrushes, found objects. Creation of those lines and drawing a variety of those lines are gonna fall into usually the beginning of what you're trying to cover. Because you gotta think in steps. How many steps are you gonna take from get, to get from point A, A to point B? At the beginning, they know nothing. At the end, we want them to know everything, 100%. And are we gonna get all the way to 100%? No, ever. They're just like, it doesn't happen just because they're, it's an ongoing process, education, learning. It's an ongoing process. So what are we going to achieve from unit one going to unit eight? Now, I know it says unit four over here, but going through all those units, what are we trying to achieve? So we're getting into a lot more specifics. And let me say before we go any further that when I get into specifics, I really try and keep it as free and open as possible because even though we have students that are moving around and we're going to be transient, we want to make sure that your the art teachers themselves have enough freedom to create the curriculums that they want to create, that they are using something that they like using and they don't feel stymied in their creative craft to this does not work for them and it turns into a burnout situation don't want to do that so we'll make it as free and open as possible kindergartners for the most part they need to know that a we don't color off the paper onto the table not saying you can't go to the edge of the paper just don't color the table that's an important quality um that they know how to Use colors to express emotions, thoughts, feelings, and ideas. Usage of line. Creates paintings with a variety of media. Use awareness of pattern and texture to create a print. All of these elements can easily be done over the course of a couple weeks. And then you're really refining what you're teaching in the subsequent units. Does that mean you need to teach everything in Q Q1? No, but you can do foundation elements here and then refine those elements throughout. So let's talk about things that we need to work on foundationally for a kindergartner as they need to go throughout the year. Number one, put your name on a paper. Identifying a student with the type of artwork so that they know that this work is theirs and that that is their design. That is an important feature. It actually falls under assessment Falls under assessment. It's not on this page, it's on a different page. Uh, but it is one of the things where they identify with the creation of their artwork and artwork for themselves. Now, after putting the name on the paper, let's go over basic elements of art. So, ENP, elements and principles, in case you're new to this. Lines, shapes, space and color we'll do color these four i focus on pretty heavily in the beginning because there's structure to the overall substance that they're going now you can change this this is not set in stone but this is just a guidance for what you're going to do moving forward now textures textures I would do a little further down the road. The reason being is because for a kindergartner, focusing on the usage of line and shape is a little more important than texture because yeah, you want their stuff to have some depth and some substance to it, but you wanna make sure that there's something that's identifiable in that artwork first, because there's nothing worse than a uh, an elementary kid going home to mom and showing her, showing them that cool piece of artwork that they did in your class and they're like, I drew this. See, it looks great. There's all this stuff here. And from your perspective, and I'll say this now, it's out of focus for a reason. A, a kindergartner might be able to draw this version, but it's sometimes gonna look like this. And having mom say, oh, that's such a great picture of a, oh, it's a house. 
I see the house. That's going to be much more rewarding for the student than for them anything else that they're going to be doing. They want to have that that acknowledgement from the parent, that acknowledgement from um, a guardian, whatever. That is going to be much more relevant than anything else. So I kind of put that later for that reason. Now, going through those elements for guidance. So things that we're learning to just get us started. So we're learning things to get us started. From there, we're moving into refinement. We're going to refine our ideas. And then from there, we're going to subsequently continue to refine until we get to our end, which is understanding. Now, all of this is really just a scaffolding for scope and sequence. Sometimes I'm worried I write sequence instead of sequence, but I think that's right. So scope and sequence. What are we learning in one grade that we're going to transfer to another grade to continue us up the path? So things that we work in pre-K are going to transfer over to kindergarten, to first grade, second grade, third grade, and onward up. Now, that is the reasoning and rationale that we're going to be looking at. I will say looking at the standards and knowing the standards, knowing K through 12, doesn't matter what grade you teach, know all the standards, at least like be aware of what's in there uh, because a lot of these things repeat. And that's a really good thing because you're gonna have students who um, the teacher didn't really focus hard on them, you focus hard on them, you'll make sure that there's a balance and a accum accumulation of knowledge rather than just deep dive in and they fall out. It's just not good. That's not gonna be good. Um, so let's look here. The assessment of, and reflection um, discusses his or her own artwork and the artworks of others. I will tell you this one now. This one particularly, that exact phrasing is repeated K through 12. There's not a person, there's not a, um, there's not a stand, a, a group of standards from K to 12 that does not have that language in it. And then it's refined for kindergarten through this, but because um, when you get to high school, all of this is not there. It's much shorter uh, for this one standard. It's, it's like four things. And they're kind of pinpointed to that class. So like in um, ceramics class, because I'm a ceramics teacher. Uh, discussing his or own artwork, the artworks of others. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that focuses on multicultural experiences and looking at what is being used to, um, how are those cultures relevant and what reference points have the students seen to help influence their own work? So what have they done in sketchbooks? What have they done in uh, discussions in class? That's outlined in here for high school, but it's exact same phrasing up here, which I really think is very important. So scope and sequence. Now going through scope and sequence, you have to have a continued discussion between K through five, six through eight, sometimes nine, because I've seen that happen, up to high school, which would be nine to 12. So ES, MS, HS. Everybody should be in the same room talking. We need to know that these people, these kids that start here, skip middle school and come to high school to take an art credit are still going to be able to grasp the concepts of kids that went through all grades and had art every single year. That is something that most people forget. Middle school is when we start to have music incorporation. Now I know we have music in K through five. Uh, however, it's really pushed a lot more as you get into exploratory connections or, um, other things listed that mean our classes, but not, uh, core classes. So knowing those diff knowing when those students can take those classes. Now, I will have some students who they took an art class in fourth grade. They missed it in fifth grade because they went to a different school that didn't have art and then they transferred over here. Next time they had art was in 10th grade. That's a lot of time where they have not had an art class and there and there's a lot of information that's going to be gone. And I, have, and I understand that and I have to work with that. You also need to make sure that you design your curriculums to fit these scenarios if that so, so happens. So back to scope and sequence. What are we learning 
in kindergarten that's going to transfer us from kindergarten to first grade. Name on paper. I'm really going to harp on this because I've got high schoolers who forget to do this and I think it's, you know, if it was done more here, that might help. All right, so name on paper. Two up here, let's work on shape structure. Uh, up on to from shape, shape structure into color theory. And you might want to, again, change these up. These are really just spitballing off the top of my head. But, you're, but you can see a progression in what we're trying to do. So name on paper, shape structure, color theory, to layering objects. So from name, name on paper, shape structure, color theory, layering on objects to, so that we can see a progression. So if we did variety of artists first, but they had no concept of what layering objects are, them understanding uh, the brilliant works of Da Vinci, Van Gogh, Dolly, Leonardo, uh, it wouldn't be as impactful for them. They wouldn't have an understanding as to why this stuff is important. So let's take a look at Da Vinci's work of St. Jerome. Now, Da Vinci was one of those just brilliant, brilliant man. Um, but the way that he created his artwork, it was always in layers. And that's kind of one of those things that we reiterate. Uh, the Adoration of the Magi, which we have over here on the side, was one of the unfinished pieces of Da Vinci. But you can clearly see in the design work that he didn't just create the people. He drew the people in sections where he'd start off with a skeletal muscular form so that he could properly curve the paint around those structures so that you got the full substance of the character. Back here in the distance where you have um, the perspective angle, the structure of the rocks where the rocks are just outlined done. However, the clear of the perspective and little bits of water elements back here to show a change in mindset, change in what was being created at the time. And by doing that, we've created a element of structure that shows us that step one has to be applied, step two, step three, step four, all the way up until the finished product. The students are gonna be the same way because if we don't scale their learning, we don't, we don't stack one element on top of another and we're trying to build and re reiterate what we're trying to learn, then all the stuff that you're teaching goes out the window because that stuff isn't sticking, it's not there substantively. All right, scope and sequence, I think that one's covered. All right, if you guys have questions, throw comments down below. As always, I will see you guys next class. Okay, I hope that you guys got something out of this tutorial. And as always, if you guys have questions or comments, don't forget to throw those down in the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe, please and, uh, please and thank you. And um, as always, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys.